Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Developer Advocate. It is a holiday weekend here in the United States, so I hope that everyone watching who has Monday off enjoys a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I, for one, plan on relaxing in Napa at a friend's wedding. All right, enough uh, planning for the weekend. Let's get into this week's latest dev news. First up, a reminder about some upcoming events. Uh, the, on September 12th through 14th, we will be uh, live streaming the .NET Conf 2018 right here on Channel 9. .NET Conf is a great free three-day conference run by the community and Microsoft. And if you're a .NET person or you want to become one, you should definitely tune in. Later in September, from September 24th through the 28th, is Microsoft Ignite in Orlando, and I'll be there along with the Channel 9 crew and some members of the CDA and Cloud Ops Advocate teams. So um, if you see me, please be sure to say hello. Tickets for Ignite are sold out, but never fear, we will be live streaming some sessions and keynotes to the web, and we'll be doing some live interviews and conversations on the show floor, similar to what we did at Build this year. So please be sure to tune in. Speaking of events, GopherCon was this week, and there was lots of news out of the Go community. First, Go 1.11 was released with some changes and improvements, including preliminary support for modules, which is an alternative to GoPath with integrated support for package, package distribution and versioning. And there's experimental support for WebAssembly. So this is all really cool. But the Go team also released some of the preliminary drafts for possible designs and proposals for Go 2. And uh, there's a video linked in the show notes to the Go 2 drafts announcement that I encourage you to watch. And if that isn't enough Go news, there is a three-part series about Go on Azure on Azure Friday. And it's available right here on Channel 9. And links to all three parts are in the show notes. Speaking of Channel 9, one of my favorite Channel 9 shows, Five Things, was renewed for a second season and will be returning with new episodes on October 3rd. So stay tuned for new episodes because you might see a familiar face, like me, on an upcoming episode. In some other cool content news, the latest episode of Behind the Tech, the podcast hosted by Microsoft CTO Kevin Scott, was released this week. And this episode is a conversation with Andrew Ng, who's one of the founders of the Google Brain Project and Coursera, and one of the preeminent AI minds of our time. And Kevin and Andrew talk about AI, uh, the future, tech, and more. And um, I was lucky enough to be in the room for the conversation. And you can hear my voice at the top and the bottom of the episode. Um, and if you're really interested in AI, AI or even just hearing two really smart technologists talk for like an hour, you should totally check it out. In some product news, Azure IoT Hub's integration with Azure Event Grid has reached general availability. An episode of the IoT show, linked in the show notes and description, will walk you through how it works. But the biggest benefits to this integration include making it easy to integrate with modern serverless architecture like Azure Functions and Azure Logic Apps. Um, there's the ability to enable alerting with quick reaction to creation, deletion, connection, and disconnection of devices. And it's easier less ex and less expensive to integrate uh, polling and services and events uh, with third-party apps using webhooks like ticketing, billing system, and database updates. In some AI news, there is a, a new web-based solution that uses AI to transform handwritten UX designs into valid HTML markup. And this is called Sketch to Code. And we've talked about some similar ideas in past episodes of TWC9, back when things were a little more in the conceptual stage. But now the app is fully available on the web. And you can also get the code solution, um, development process, and other details on GitHub. And Sketch to Code was created in collaboration with Kabul and Spike Techniques. So check that out. It's, it's very cool. You can literally just kind of draw um, something, and then it'll turn into an actual form. I don't often talk about Microsoft Office 365 here on TWC9, but there are a few cool updates worth mentioning. First, later this year, automated transcription services created using Microsoft's AI tools will be natively available for audio and video files um, stored in OneDrive and SharePoint. And this uses the same technology behind Microsoft Stream. And so this will make it possible to search the content of your audio and video files, which can be really useful depending on what type of work you do. So it's useful for my work for sure. 
Um, and then in some Office 365 Home and Personal news, beginning October 2nd, O365 Home and Personal subscribers get access to more activations. And so home accounts now support six licenses rather than five. And rather than limiting how many devices you can install O365 on, it can be used on 10 devices. And you can then um, install O365 on unlimited numbers of devices. It used to be 10, now it's unlimited. But you can be signed into five devices at a time. And now it's time for my pick of the week. Fun fact about me, I do not have a driver's license. Chalk it up to having uh, spent the better part of a decade in New York City, but I'm not a great driver and thus I choose not to drive myself. But that doesn't mean I don't geek out over cool car tech, especially if it involves Lego. And this is so cool. The team at Lego built an amazing one-to-one -one version of the iconic Bugatti uh, Chiron using Lego Technic. And get this, it drives. It actually freaking drives. The final project took 16 specialists, 13,000 man hours to build, and the final car has over a million LEGO Technic elements. No glue is used in the assembly, and the car weighs 1,500 kilograms. And the engines are insane too, with more than 2,300 LEGO power function mo motors and a theoretical performance of 5.3 miles per hour. Uh, so check out the video in the show notes to see how this all came together, as well as links to the LEGO site that offer up more details about how this whole thing works. And Honestly, this is almost cool enough to convince me to get a driver's license. Mm -hmm. Almost. Well, that does it for me. Let me know what your favorite Lego set is in the comments. And if you liked this episode, uh, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel, Microsoft Developer, to get all the latest Channel 9 content. See you next week.